Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the Prince of Storm and got harem in My Little Pony Universe. Part 8. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. The lone soldier of Celestia's Sun Guards Corporation was walking towards the lone construction, with a confused expression to carry on Princess Celestia's orders for him to bring the prince back to Canterlot, and to be honest, the poor soldier actually hurried to comply to the request, since as of late, he and his fellow, male, soldiers had found always harder staying around the Sun Alicorn. The younger ones especially as most of the times those kept turn shy when with her. There is simply something different about her majesty that I can't put my hoof on she seems just delicious. BRRR. And for some reason I get shivers whenever I think too much about it. The stallion muttered unsure before forcefully suppressing the twitching in both his spine and privates, and somehow he could tell the two were signals completely opposite in meaning, one of lust and the other of dread. Still, orders were orders and once pointed in the area by Big Macintosh, about the possible whereabouts of the prince and the element of honesty, the soldier moved to find the wayward Alicorn not that he faulted the young pony for wanting to spend time with the farmer and her strong legs and toned flan. Darn it. Something is not right the stallion cursed shaking his head free once again of those thoughts. Prince Maelstrom. Your highness are you here? The soldier called out opening the barn door to enter as it was the very last part of the acres he still had to check. I I am here said Wind Alicorn immediately said jumping out of a near pile of hay and hastily adjusting his red coat and the jumpsuit jacket under it. Prince Maelstrom? The soldier asked confused with his head reclined to the side. We were cough. Looking around for something the prince answered lamely while clearing his throat. Something. We. The other repeated as A.J. failed to come out from the same pile stealthily and instead tripping to attract both stallions' attention. Shuck. The mare groaned as she got up slamming her hat on her head to cover the messy state of her mane. Be okay, Miss Applejack? The soldier asked concerned. Yeah yeah, I'm fine. She replied rapidly. Are you limping? Nuo? She tried saying. Eyes. Come on. We were getting to the good part. A second mare voice said whining as Dash had popped out of the hay. We were starting round three it was then that she finally noticed the unknown stallion in the room, making her voice slowly drawl into silence. Of searching. Round three of searching. Maelstrom said making both girls nod rapidly searching? The other stallion said with narrowed eyes. Yes. The three answered as one. And I guess you were searching long and hard. He said stressing the two words. Very. I mean yes. AJ answered sighing longingly before correcting herself. Just the three of you? Think he was busy and couldn't join us? Dash answered with a nervous smile. And how long have you three spent searching? A couple hours. AJ. Maelstrom shrieked making her cover her mouth with both hooves. You are the prince and the son of Princess Luna, well I am a simple cadet I saw nothing and I know nothing. Just please go back to Canterlot as soon as you can as Her Majesty Princess Celestia needs to talk with you, please see to also have Miss Sparkle come as well, not that kind of come of course. The soldier said walking away shaking his head. Certain ponies have all the luck they heard him mutter before closing the barn door behind himself. That killed the mood. AJ said sighing. Not really. The prince answered. Nah. Dash chorused. You two have no sense oh shame. The farmer answered grumbling. Whatever. Let's go fetch Twy and see what her majesty wants, the mare Pegasus said stretching her wings a little and yawning. Em dash. Yes. Your drip in. The farm mare said pointing at her friend's backside. You ook. Let's get clean before going then the prince said sighing. Several minutes later library. It's me or there are more couples than usual walking around lately. Twilight asked curious as looked outside. Now that you mention it, yeah. Even Snip and Snail seem to have found their special mare now that's talking about miracles here. Spike answered impressed as he took watch to various couples coming and going acting all lovey dovey without a care in the world. It was bound to happen, I am just surprised by the sheer number of couples mostly, but I admit there seems to be something in the air that inspires romanticism. The unicorn admitted sighing as she returned to her work. Why light? Rarity asked as she entered the library. Oh. Good evening. She answered cheerfully. Good evening, dear. Can I borrow Spike for a moment? The fashionista asked. Uh. Sure, sure no problem Twilight answered confused by the tone of the other mare, it sounded almost needy. In a bad way. Good. Come with me you, I had to spend all morning outside to check the renovations I am doing to my shop, and I need a friendly face to relax with. Rarity answered moving the small dragon on her back and rapidly walking outside. Mostly curious. Twilight commented with narrowed eyes. Rarity. It was then she heard Spike scream in fear. What the? Rarity, stew up. 
She heard the small dragon scream again soon followed by him running back inside the library, slamming the door closed. Open this darn door. Both could literally taste the anger powering Rarity's voice as the door went blue away launching Spike away and tumbling at Twilight's hooves. What are you doing, Rarity? Twilight hissed as she walked to stand in front of her assistant in a protective manner. I am recovering my pet, Twilight Sparkle. Step aside and let his mistress do her thing. Rarity hissed as her horn shined in magic. Pet. Mistress. The purple unicorn asked shocked. I will explain later, but that is not Rarity. Something's wrong with her. The small dragon answered. The mongrel is refusing to let his beloved mistress vent her pent-up stress and needs to be disciplined. Now hurry up and hoof him over or I will take him by myself and ignore any and every safe word he would use until I am done. The white unicorn hissed furious. She is under the effects of something then restraining is in order. Twilight muttered as she saw the almost empty look of the other mare's eyes. Hide Spike. The librarian then said as her horn summoned a thick screen of mist in front of herself barely an instant before a bolt of light shot by Rarity could hit them. Where are you? Show yourself. Rarity growled as the mist circled all around her making it impossible to even see the library around her. When the fashionista saw the faint light of a horn in the mist grow in intensity, she shot her own to try and grab her target, only for it to dissipate in smoke. Presenting you my second human spell they call it Karigakur, or hidden in the mist, if translated from Makepanese Twilight answered in a chorus of voices, as several ropes of purple magic circled Rarity's legs and neck, forcing her to lie on the floor. But I think just calling it hiding mist will suffice all the same. The real Twilight then said once the mist dispelled showing four copies of herself holding the fashionista down, while Twilight's own magic circled the trapped mare's horn, making it turn dull grey. What the? Nullifying spell, as long as my will is stronger than yours I can stop you from using your horn to cast magic. One of the upsides of having a brother in the army is that I can access some of their restraining spells if I need to. And after the second coming of Nightmare Moon, I decided that I needed to. Now let's talk. She answered. What do you want to know? I just want my pet. It's my right as his mistress. Rarity spat angrily. Spike. Twilight asked without looking away. Me and and Rarity kind of are an item a couple mare friend and dragon, I mean the small dragon admitted slowly. I got the message, and kinda I suspected it since she is adamant in you and not the first pony passing by being her pet. She answered coldly. Sorry if I didn't tell you. Spike said looking down. You didn't trust me? Twilight asked hurt. You always treat me like a baby. I was afraid you would have been angry. He finally admitted. You hoo hoo. To his surprise Twilight simply chuckled a little. To a mother her baby boy will always remain little and innocent, even when you will become an ageless dragon, to me you will always be the little baby dragon assistant that didn't know a thing about cataloging books the first time he started helping me. She answered smirking. Mo oh, mother Spike said shocked. It was big sister at the beginning, I guess it evolved a little along the road. She answered shrugging. Weeeee. Spike bellowed in tears as he jumped on her back to hug her and actually making her stumble a little. But I am still going to beat you two to smithereens once the situation is over for not telling me this sooner. The unicorn then added with a frightening gentle smile that had Rarity to shiver in dread. Duly noted. Spike muttered faintly in answer. Duly noted. Duly noted, mom. He tried saying. Better, I am still going to pull you inside out, but it was a better answer all the same. Yay. The small dragon answered whimpering. This is all good and all, but let me go now. Rarity screeched trying to break free. Ian. It was then that a faraway cry of pleasure made all three stop what they were doing to look around. That wasn't me. The fashionista said scandalized. Nope and he said it was Yao Wu what the hey Twilight answered before seeing that right outside the window of the her library, a couple of youngsters had decided to go at it rather savagely, the disturbing thing was that nobody else seemed to mind as they simply sidestepped the rutting couple as if it was nothing strange. See Spikey. That could be us. Come oon. Tell Twilight to let me goo. I am in the mood finally. Rarity begged with a husky tone as she managed to give a little giggle to her flank, no matter the clones restraining her. You too. No. We didn't yet. Spike said immediately at seeing the indignant rage mounting in Twilight's eyes. But we can now. Nopany will mind. Come oon. You don't want your mistress to pop your cherry, Spikey wakey. The fashionist cooed winking. Baba baba baba. Try using your brain to think, not your lower parts, Spike. She is not in herself. Twilight said rolling her eyes. But what if I want him in myself then? You are not helping, Rarity. I know, Twy, but it's hard I mean. I know you mean metaphorically hard. To be honest it is odd only metaphorically, Twy. He admitted ashamed. You? The purple unicorn answered gagging. Ox the one that was deep-rooting her cold friend yesterday. 
I could hear you gurgle and moan from the other side of the library. Through earplugs. Spike said in a deadpan. It is different. She answered huffing in annoyance. Yeah, because it was you doing the deed. Exactly. You aren't even hiding the fact that you are a hypocrite. Spike admitted impressed. You deep wrote mealy. Isn't it disgusting to take a male's thing in your mouth? Rarity asked curious. He never argues about my preference for Bapingus, even openly admitting to enjoy doing it so, I find returning the favor with his horn simply fair, and as I like, love, him and every part of him, so his beep too, it's something I what the hey are you making me say Twilight started answered before noticing and interrupting the answer to yell at Rarity with a very red face. Gurgle. Spike could only do his best at not puking at the mental images of his newly discovered mom's mating preferences. I would have been happy with just a no, it was you to go into details, not me. Umph. Rarity answered with a haughty offended huffing. Why you? Out of my fucking way. A new noise interrupted the two mares, though this time was the furious roar of Prince Maelstrom Knight, soon followed by the sound of lots of ponies running away in great hurry both from the scream and the primal bloodlust empowering it. Maylee? Twilight asked as he entered the room dragging both Fluttershy and Pinky behind himself, as the two had decided to hug a wing each and to not let go no matter what. Something's wrong with every pony, Twy. Ah can understand young couples stealing a kiss or cuddling in Thaw Street, believe me I can as this is a free world, but why there are couples bucking at every corner? AJ asked in a mixture of disbelief and disgust. Never seen so many dangling parts, and I used to go to bathhouses quite often back in Kanoha. Maelstrom added grimacing. I can tell you that I didn't need to know the preferences of half Ponyville when it comes to mating, honestly, I could live very well without knowing that. Dash said turning momentarily green on her face. And Fluttershy and Pinky. Spike asked worried. Those two. The prince said lifting his wings high to show the two mares still adamantly refusing to let go and even snuggling on them. They jumped me as soon as me, AJ and Dash reached Ponyville Square, they tried to tag team me for a quickie with audience right in the middle of the street. He added annoyed. We managed to talk them out of it by promising a group thing in a more private setting to make it more romantic. Dash said annoyed. A romantic gangbang. How can that be romantic? Rarity asked curious, by now too much into the discussion to even remember she was tied up. Apparently they believe it is possible why is Rarity tied, twy? Maelstrom asked. Just like Shy and Pinky she was out of control and tried to assault Spike that apparently forgot to tell me they were in a relationship. Rarity and Spike. No way. Dash answered shocked. You sure, Twilight AJ added equally surprised. Yes, he confirmed it himself. She answered before looking intently at the only Alicorn in the room. You knew about it, don't you? The purple unicorn asked with an angry frown. He asked for pointers and had me swear silence, he answered sheepishly. But you should have told me all the saw. It was a pinky promise. He added. Ah. A pinky promise. Twilight repeated while glaring at the small dragon perched on her back. Apparently you can't break one so I had to comply. We have more important things to worry about, like the fact that three of us are turning into mating maniacs, while out there every pony is getting even too much friendly. Dash said sighing. The fact remains in why we are not affected. Twilight wondered aloud as Maelstrom took her place in keeping Rarity down through clones and a helpful chop on the back of her neck that knocked her out. We were always feeling kinda frisky lately, but not like the others. AJ answered shrugging. Same here let's say we overworked a little in our special time with Melee lately, but nothing too extreme. Dash admitted with a red face. And you? Twilight asked. Nothing. The prince replied confused. What do you mean with nothing? She asked back. This last week I spent it mostly closed in the castle with Trixie to follow Luna's lessons, my mother wanted to be sure we would be at the same level academically speaking. Or together alone in the same room for as much time as possible. Dash added under her breath making the others roll their eyes. So you never got out? Spike asked. Pretty much, the wind Alicorn answered. AJ? Twilight asked with narrowed eyes. The, yep, the bar needed some fixin' so I ah spent not much time outside either this couple days, why? The farmer answered unsure. And you, Dash. There was some problem in the Everfree Forest, so me and few others have been arguing with the rain clouds in there for three days straight, since it simply didn't want to stop raining, never dodged that many lightning bolts before. She answered. And me and Spike have been closed here to sort out the last shipment of books from Canterlot. Twilight muttered. That's because you kept reading them instead of just putting them in place, Twy. We took two days to do the job of 30 minutes. Spike added with a fake cough. Hush. She replied embarrassed. So? Dash asked. A minute. Flutter she. You who? The Pegasus asked without lifting her face from its place deeply buried in the prince's wing she was clutching on. 
You were outside caring for your animal friend like usual. The purple unicorn asked with narrowed eyes. Uwen. I tried to, but they kept mating and refused to listen to me, in the end, after watching all of them having so much fun I decided I wanted my master to do the same with me, she answered dropping the wing to wrap her forelegs around Maelstrom's neck. Master Twilight repeated with a suffering sigh. Yoo-hoo. The Pegasus answered as she kept covering the Alicorn's cheek in kisses. And I find this situation disturbing, Twy. Maelstrom asked rising a hoof. Yes Maley. You can. She replied tiredly. Then help. He then begged as Pinky decided to emulate Fluttershy and attack the other half of his face. Hooves off. Dash roared peeling the two mares away with some difficulty. And I guess Pinky was outside doing Pinkie Pie things. Twilight said ignoring the struggling Pegasus trying to keep their two friends away from the prince. Yep. Pinky answered as she slithered away from Dash's hole to pounce on the Alicorn to cuddle with him. Whatcha thinking, Twy? AJ asked. For some reason whoever spends a lot of time outside becomes more open to mating, it seems, Twilight said as she was forced to close the windows, as the moans had in the meantime doubled in number and volume. Then why I am not like them? Dash asked finally admitting defeat and letting Fluttershy to smother her cold friend. That is what I don't understand. Twilight admitted. Something was trying to brainwash you, by the way. Karama said from the seal while stretching lazily. Eh? What? The unicorn asked confused. Karama says something tried brainwash me and him. The prince replied unsure. And yet you spent time inside the castle. The mayor replied thoughtful. Eyes. AJ asked looking outside confused. So it's something airborne? Like a virus. Maelstrom asked. Eyes. Then why it would affect us less? Especially Dash since she was outside, you I can understand since you have a healing factor, but we others. Twilight answered. Eyes. AJ asked again rising her voice. Immunity. Dash proposed. We can't be sure, but. Eyes. The farm mare yelled making the other three jump. What? Twilight asked. The sun is pink. AJ answered simply while pointing outside. The sun is not pink, AJ. Its color is pink. The purple unicorn started saying before actually looking outside, noticing that yes, there was a definite pinkish hue in the light outside, and that the couple's mating had increased even more in numbers. What the hey? Dash muttered. Let me try something Twilight said moving a hoof outside and then looking at Maelstrom. Wanna fuck? Eep. She blurted out before retracting her hoof inside immediately and blushing. Wow, some kind of sexy beam? The prince asked impressed. So it's something that has to do with the sun? Spike tried saying while badly hiding his amusement. It would explain why we are less affected, we all were inside and got very minor exposure to the modified sunlight. Twilight answered. But what about me? Dash then asked. The rain clouds. You were dealing with thick clouds so you got protected by those. Twilight said after a little thought. It was almost night the whole time, you couldn't see the sun under there, that's right. Dash confirmed. Maybe that is also why you were having troubles removing them, the clouds were protecting you and the others. Maelstrom said smirking. Eh? I have to thank the Everfree Forest crazy weather then. That's a first. She answered laughing. The fact remains that there is something extremely bad going on. We better alert Celestia and ask for advice. Twilight said concerned. I would advise against that. Luna yelled as she barged inside the room, dragging a thoroughly tied up Trixie behind her, with both mares covered by an umbrella of shadows that was evidently being corroded fast, since the moon Alicorn all but jumped inside the library to evade the sun. Mom. Maelstrom yelled worried as he hurried to stand next to her, and finally dislodging Shy and Pinky from his back, thanks to the sudden sprint. I am okay, my son. Nothing I couldn't face. Luna answered smiling gently and enjoying the relieved hug her precious baby gave her. What happened? Twilight asked. It seems like corruption has caught my sister Celestia. The princess answered. What? Yes, I too was shocked, as it seems though the corrupted form of Celestia was less overt with her plans like Nightmare Moon was with me. She has actually planned well and enlarged her hold on this world a step at a time over the course of three weeks if not more, now she apparently decided she could kickstart her plans whatever they are. Luna answered. And Discord. Is he helping her? He may love all this chaos, Maelstrom asked worried. No. He too fell victim of Celestia's plans. How? Discord can pretty much do be whatever he wants whenever he wants. How could she dispose of him without the elements? Twilight asked shocked. Believe it or not, Itcha Itcha did all the work for her. Luna answered simply. No way. Maelstrom said with wide eyes. 
I am not joking, I tried to somehow enlist the foal for help, but I found him reading one of those books with bloodshot eyes and big dark bags under them, he has apparently been reading the same book over and over for the entirety of those three weeks. Without stop, not even for bathroom breaks as my nose could testify. She answered. How did she do that? There are spells to compel some pony to want something above all else, but can they have effect on discord? Twilight said confused. Those books had recently become his blind spot. I found a very weak form of that spell on the first page, too weak to even notice unless you check it for that, then I found another on the second page that was a little stronger, then a third one on the third page, and so on, I had to stop reading the book after the fifth page, or I would still be there keeping discord company. Luna answered. So each new spell is triggered into activation after the previous page has been read, and the compulsion implanted, the more one read the more they want to read, and I guess that on the last page, there is a compulsion about starting reading from the beginning, renovating and strengthening the compulsion at each reading and re-reading of the whole book. Twilight theorized. But Discord can AJ tried saying. He can do everything he wants, if his mind is too much occupied by reading, he can't use his powers because he physically cannot want to do anything else other than reading, maybe on a subconscious level he might try to break free, but I have no idea about how much time he may need to do that. The purple unicorn answered immediately. For now we have more pressing matters, like my sister actively working to conquer this world, and I fear that by how strongly her sunlight is affecting every pony, we may not have lots of hope to not succumb to her brainwashing. Luna said grimacing. Not even you, mom? Maelstrom asked. She is using lust to bend other ponies to her will, basic animal instinct to overrule rationality, we too would be affected, even if I made a vote to not let another stallion take Strom's place when your father left this world, I am still a living being, I too would feel the need my sister's corrupted aura casts on whoever gets too close to her. I had to tie Trixie up because she fell fully under Celestia's cursed powers and was fanatically following her every order. The moon princess answered shaking her head. We have been called to the palace by Aunt Celestia, she wanted me and Twilight to go there along the other elements. The prince answered. I can guess the reason why then. Just in case the elements themselves and your own force will could withstand her pink sun, her direct involvement could have had a better chance in corrupting you all as well. Luna said. Well, apparently the elements didn't help, as you can see with Fluttershy, Pinky and Rarity, Princess. Dash answered sighing. What are we gonna do? AJ asked worried. My first instinct was for us to hide on the moon just long enough to organize our counterattack, but I fear her influence could still reach us there, even if in a tiny part, unless we use the dark side of the satellite. Luna answered doubtful. And at least half our planet will be under Celestia's sun, meaning she will at least sense our position, meaning that we would be chased by that light around the globe as we escape the dawn. Twilight added. What about Kanoha? Dash asked out of the blue. My old world. Maelstrom said with a raised eyebrow. Only me, Celestia and my son can open a portal there she will know we are hiding in that human world. Luna countered. But would she actually risk following us? She maybe needs to stay here for the sun to be pink and influence every pony. Twilight answered. Wouldn't the sun be always up fry everything? AJ asked. Probably she planned to have the minimum needed night to stop that from happening and not let her control slip too much, she probably already reached the same conclusion that Nightmare Moon failed to get when she planned for her eternal night. Luna answered. So if we go to Kanoha she will be too busy keeping every pony here under control herself, but what if she sends some guards? Dash asked. If we are lucky the people she controls needs continuous exposure to her son or her direct presence, it seems like a form of complex hypnosis. She might not risk sending soldiers after us that would then break free of her spell. Twilight said unsure. To be sure I will keep my eyes open and personally force any portal close myself hopefully that world's moon would be gentle enough to help me. Luna said. So we have a plan? Maelstrom asked. It's the only one we have actually. Twilight answered. Better than nothing, sugar. AJ added. Then let's go. Maybe Eno or some other Yamanaka will be able to snap the free of that brainwash a little faster than us just waiting, they are good at mind arts. Maelstrom answered looking at the corrupted girls with a worried expression. They will be okay, trust me. Luna offered with a gentle smile. It was in that moment that a literal ray of sunlight blew away the ceiling of the library to shower the present and light along, letting the corrupted Celestia elegantly descend in front of them. The very fast casting of that shadow, sister. Congratulations. Celestia said with a soft laugh at seeing the sweating Luna keep a thick dome of condensed shadows up to cover the group. I was barely fast enough, yes. The moon Alicorn said with a strained voice as the dome kept emitting smoke and soon developed deep cracks. Why are you others opposing me? I am just helping every pony. 
the son Ali Korn offered with an honest sad tone, as the sunlight shining on the ruined library gained even more power making Luna gasp. Helping? How's that helping them? The princess of the night asked growling. I am spreading love, sister. You cannot be so blind to not see it. The other replied with a gentle smile. You are spreading lust, aunt. You can't be confusing both. Maelstrom said angrily. And I can spread something else too for you if you want. She answered with a coy wink. Burgle. Selly. Luna said scandalized. What? He has a big one, it's a waste if he keeps using it on subpar mares. Celestia answered pouting childishly. Hey. I can satisfy my stallion, thank you. Dash answered heavily offended. DFT. I can. The rainbow main mare insisted growling. Then why he needs five girls? Maybe because he loves us, you mean mare? AJ countered. Ox the one that can only last two rounds. Ah was tired okay I would like to see you last that much after a whole day oh hard work. The farmer bellowed. It is not my fault if you are frigid Celestia said huffing. How dare you? You can't even swallow as I do. You always choke. And for goodness sake, there is nothing bad about taking it in the flank. The sun Ali Korn said with crossed hooves. I prefer on fa face, so what? I like feeling it stream down my cheeks. And unless the next day you have nothing to do, doing it on the back door makes it hard to walk, Dash added. That too. AJ said nodding. And what do you mean that you swallow better than US? Both mares then said as soon as they noticed the rest of Celestia's insult. Every night for the last two weeks I kept sneaking in his room to get my fill, blowing him was the only thing stopping me from blowing my cover and reveal my new free form before my plan was completed. The son Ali Korn answered. Scarlet Mare. Both AJ and Dash shrieked as one. Considering how much stuff he kept shooting, you were pretty much blue-balling him. The other answered shrugging. It's my baby you dirty Miss Creams are talking about. Luna yelled furious. I have been without a male for thousands of years, can I please have some pony finally stuff both my holes until they overflow? I think it's only fair for me to finally have a turn. Celestia said annoyed. Then use one of the other stallions. Why my son? That by the way is actually your nephew. Luna roared back. Considering how hungry I am, a normal stallion would die if I get serious, or at least have his hip bone shatter and his sack shrivel down to nothing and fall off. I need shock therapy to blow the initial pent-up lust and then I will have my little herd. Unless the only stallion I know that passes enough raw stamina to not die on me after the 50th consecutive orgasm does a very good job and convinces me that I don't need others for the following thousand years of continuous non-stop hungry sex, that said stallion just so happened to be my nephew is just a minor nuisance for my marehood. Celestia answered making said wind Ali Korn pale considerably in dread. 50,000 years of non-stop mating Luna yelled in disbelief. I was very busy after banishing you, and masturbation only helped so much, a door handle cannot substitute a living, breathing, cooming stallion. Her sister replied simply. Why my baby then? So that's why I heard you had some pony repair your door once a month ever since I was banished Luna demanded, her last comment whispered barely loud enough to be heard. Have you seen the beast he is packing? This mare wants her cucumber extra large. Celestia answered pointing at herself with both her front hooves. The Granati is always your nephew. My son. It's incest. You say this just because you don't even remember what it feels like to be stretched to the breaking. I bet it will feel amazing to be brutalized by that monster. My storm was able to make me scream, yes. And probably Maelstrom inherited that gift from his father and then some, but this changes nothing. I beg to differ, and I bet my mare Hud too will love to give it a try. Will you two stop talking about it, Dash yelled in exasperation. I am surprised he even fits inside you others without killing you, to be honest. Celestia said huffing. Love, determination and lube make miracles, honey. The cyan pegasus answered sticking her nose up in the air. And lots of schedule exercises. AJ added. That too, very useful human stuff that one. Can we please open a portal now? This is getting embarrassing. Maelstrom begged face hoofing in shame. Yeah. A very blushing twilight added. We will stop you, Selly. We will come up with a plan to stop your mad plans. And I will personally kick your flank for even thinking about molesting my baby. Luna hissed as a portal opened behind the group. It's not molesting if both partners are consensual. And I know he will love my scorching tight puss. Okay we are going. Maelstrom yelled as he shoved the others inside the portal and then diving inside himself. Why what a meanie, he didn't even let me finish. The corrupted son Ali Korn said pouting as she stopped overcharging the sunlight in the area before flying up in the sky. DCH. Very well, I will have some time to finish organizing my new kingdom of love before they return with their silly plan, just a couple days more, and I will finally have some pony able to scratch my itch, I can't wait. Hehehe. <laughs>
Letting out a deranged giggle the princess teleported away, unaware of a pair of zebra eyes following her every move through binoculars. My amulets can hide me from your eyes and stop my lust from her eyes, but I cannot do much more than hope for them to truly defeat you. I better prepare some more for myself and them when they return. Decora muttered returning inside her hut to recharge the protection she had put around her home that were barely enough to stop Celestia from corrupting her as well, she actually had to thank the natural magic of the forest for aiding her and not turning mating crazy like the others. It will be a big shock for Tsunade to see her beloved godson crash land in her living room along other ponies, half of which needing medical help of the psychological kind, but she was not about to let him down when he asked her for help, and neither will his friends. It was time for several people in Kanoha to pay their blonde friend back for all the time he helped them fix their issues, starting by helping him and his friends with saving their world. I'm a cow to train your dragon, no, I am not apologizing, nor I own the movie book rights. Ponyville Library. So you will need to send Spike to those dragons to learn how to be one? Maelstrom asked shocked. Yes, his greed episode showed me that there are things I cannot help him with Twilight answered sniffling. Do the others know? The prince asked while consoling her. Yes, Rarity was especially against the idea. I can bet. He answered chuckling. I just wish I just wanted a book to be there. A manual or something. But Princess Celestia says that the dragon tribes won't part from that knowledge, it's part of their culture. A dragon should be raised by and only dragons the purple unicorn said sobbing. I understand is this place that far away? The prince asked. In the mountains, a lot of caves far from any other civilization, it will take weeks for them just to take Spike and then bring him back once done, let alone train him. Twilight answered showing him a map of the place. I see. When will they come? Maelstrom asked sighing. In a month, they had been gentle enough to let us have enough time to 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 the unicorn tried answering, but choking on the words. I got it. Listen, I got to go do you think you'll be okay? The Alicorn asked concerned. Yes, Shining said he would have come to keep me company a little. You just go. I won't keep you. She answered with a small smile. Good, I'll try to be back before those dragons come, Kay. The prince said kissing her cheek. Okay, she answered nodding. The portal later Kanoha. Hoi. Team. Sakura-chan. Kakashi-sensei. The wind Alicorn, in his human henge, called out to his old team, once finally found them sitting in a BBQ restaurant. Hoi. You okay? Kakashi answered with a cheerful wave. Pretty much. Can I ask you others a small favor? The blonde asked smirking. I don't like that smile Sasuke muttered with narrowed eyes. What kind of favor? Sakura asked equally suspicious. A recovery job, and since it is about a precious pony of mine I will pay well to justify the hassle. The prince answered taking away from his side an orange-sized pouch to gently put it on their table with a dull clink. Sound. Am Sakura muttered impressed at the various chestnut-sized gems in the deceptively small sack. You know. I think I like your new social status, Naruto. Kakashi said chuckling amused as he checked a diamond against the sun. Greedy bastard. Both Sakura and Sasuke muttered as one. Meh. I care more about making my friends happy than money, but I know a mission is a mission, so I won't pull it to Zuna and pay for a lower rank than what the mission should be labeled as. The blonde answered. And by the ridiculous amount you are giving us how high is the rank in question? Sasuke asked. How high it is fighting dragons in the official mission rulebook of Kanoha about ranking? Naruto asked smirking. To be honest he didn't expect his former team to look at him with wide eyes, as if he was crazy. A month later Ponyville outside the town. How month why? I will be back before you even know it. Spike tried saying to the distraught mare. Snee Eiffel. Come on don't cry or I will do that too. The small dragon begged already with moisture in his eyes. You make it sound easy. Dash answered grimacing as she tried valiantly to not cry herself and ruining her cool image out of childish pride. Gay just right, okay. It's all I ask. Twilight finally gurgled out between tears. I will do my best, I promise. Spike answered finally losing the battle against his own tears to freely cry. The dragon is coming. Pinky said with a sad voice, not even she was smiling in that situation. Be good okay. Learn fast and come back soon, okay. Rarity ordered. Of course. Spike answered. They must be in a hurry, AJ said sniffling. That dragon is not slowing down, Dash said unsure once really checked the arriving beast. The deer is not blighting either flutter she added confused. It's not slowing down. Twilight yelled with wide eyes as the multi-hundreds of tons of dragon were falling towards them at top speed. Scatty ear. Dash bellowed making the group split up immediately to let the colossal creature crash land with a deafening woo -um. On impact and rising a titanic cloud of dust. W what the hay spike said with wide eyes. D twilight. S sparkle. 
The clearly wounded dragon begged as he dragged himself towards the purple unicorn. What happened? She asked in horror. BBB book. A as promised. Read it oh. The dragon answered before collapsing in a dead faint with a claw pointed palm up holding a huge book. The book. Spike asked confused. The book was a cube of tightly written parchment measuring a meter for a meter for a meter in width that was obviously written by hand and in a great hurry, but luckily still easily readable. But the how to train your dragon, the complete guide, just please keep those four psycho away from us, we beg you. Dot Twilight said reading the book title aloud. You hoo 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 ha 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 ha. You don't have to go. You don't have to go. Rarity yelled happily as she hugged Spike with all her strength. Rarity. Air. I need to breath. The small dragon answered, even if clearly happy to be suffocated by her. Four psychos? AJ asked confused. I think I have a small clue about who did this. Twilight answered smirking and showing them the small post it glued to the cover of the book. Celebratory sake now, explanation later. Love you. MK. You hoo hoo. That stallion is going to get lucky when he is back. Dash answered laughing. You can bet on it. Twilight said with a relived smile. Meanwhile in Kanoha pub. Keep it coming. I just slayed a bunch of fire-spitting lizards. Kakashi, just like the rest of Team 7 covered in bruises, claw marks and singed clothes, said aloud to call the waiter. It could have gone worse. Maelstrom said pleased while new feathers were already growing to cover the ones he had lost from his wings. All things considered yes, yes it could have gone worse. Sasuke answered nodding and emptying his bottle. But both laundry tab and bar tab are on you, Naruto. Sakura added looking at her ruined clothes with a sigh. Aye aye. But at least we are no longer on fire. Even the smell of smoke is almost gone completely. The prince answered whining. That's also true. To Team 7. Kakashi said rising his dish. The Team 7. The most baddest team ever. The three members of the team answered as one before laughing. End of the Amic. Tsunade had just finished assembling a veritable war council, formed by the various clan heads of Konoha and the elders' retired councillors of Minato's short-lived tenure as Hokage and even Hiruzen's own office in the now kinda overfilled room, even if it was the second biggest room in the tower. The biggest of all was the Hokage's personal bathroom Tabarama apparently couldn't function without his personal sauna close by. I must say, not even when we were facing Abito and the Akatsuki all of us have been called in a single place. Hiashi admitted surprised. Most surprising. An elder answered nodding. I can give you a one-word answer as to why I am moving the best resources Konoha has to offer. Kakashi said simply as he sat at his personal desk facing the assemble. And why Suna is doing the same. A projection of Gara said from a corner of the room. Same here. The projection of A the Raikage added from the opposite side. And same going for spring. Princess Koyuki said looking especially giddy about the thing. I knew borrowing the Akatsuki's communication jutsu would have been a good idea. Onoichi Yamanaka, Enoichi's cousin taking momentarily the position of clan head until Ino was ready for it, said in pride. Yep. Chaoza conceded nodding. And what is this one word answer? Tsu Yuzuka asked huffing with Hana sitting next to her, already training for the position, and with both women looking annoyed. Naruto. The Hokage answered simply. Oh, okay then. Makes sense. The Inuzuka matriarch answered satisfied with several approving grunt from the others around her, and more muffled ones from behind, the projections of the other Kages. Really that must be a bloodline ability about making friends or his pony blood acting up, even as a human, I can't give it any other explanation. Kakashi couldn't stop himself from thinking in awe at the acceptance of that as a good reason for all they were doing. Since you all are accepting this then surprisingly I guess we will also need to give you others the full disclosure as to why our blonde friend is on a diplomatic mission in a foreign country. Doc Kakashi said chuckling at the wild muttering the others were going through with their speculations. It was in that moment that a gentle knocking at the door stopped them dead. Pan I? Tsunade asked as she joined in the room. You want to make the official reveal? Be my guest. Kakashi answered clearly looking amused. Come on, come in. They won't bite. Tsunade said motioning to Naruto to enter. Hello. The young man said looking extremely sheepish, thing that immediately sent the people not in the know on edge. Hi there. A said immediately with a shy smile, still looking sorry for his first outburst at seeing the blonde's pony appearances. A-san. Hi Naruto-kun. Koyuki said with a thousand gigawatt smile. You hoo hoo. Koyuki-chan, have you had good dreams lately? The young man asked with a gentle smile. Thanks to you. Lots. She answered nodding happily. Glad to hear that. Can we return to the matter at hand? There must be a real emergency if you, of all people, needed help. Hiashi asked curious. 
the land where he has moved and is kinda different from the usual, and for a good reason we didn't share exactly how much different it is. Until now. Tsunade said sheepishly. Okay. Shikakunara said unsure. What can possibly be so different to warrant secrecy, Hokage-sama? Shibi Aburami asked with his usual monotone. We L who of you here is really good at forcefully dispelling henges? Kakashi asked lamely making both Naruto and Tsunade blush. Be excluded, since we are technically family I cannot be considered. For neutrality's sake. Tsunade said. The spelling hinges Kahara muttered unsure. Curious request. Another elder muttered in agreement. My bugs. Shibi offered after he and Shikaku exchanged a moment of silent communication looking in each other's eyes. Use them on Naruto, please. Kakashi asked. But Kurama-san. He won't act against them this time, trust me. The man answered encouragingly. Sigh. As you wish the clan had answered as from under his coat, thousands of small bugs flew towards the blond man covering his chest. You hoo hoo. It tickles. He admitted chuckling before his body seemed to weaver like water, as the hinge got disrupted until it dissolved without even the customary cloud of smoke. Leaving behind wind Alicorn Prince Maelstrom Knight for them to see. Plink. In the astounded silence that followed nobody noticed how Shibi's sunglasses dropped so much from the shock to fall on his desk. Proudly presenting you, Prince Maelstrom Knight. Heir to the throne of Knight of Canterlot and actually son of Princess Luna, before Minato-sensei was gently asked to hide him here with us, until his real mother could be snapped out from her moment of madness. The Hokage said with a dull voice. No, it's not a prank. No, I am not joking. Yes he is a winged unicorn called Alicorn. Yes, you can drink as I personally left a bottle of almost lethal scotch under your seats. Yes, we are here to help saving a nation of pastel-colored ponies from tyranny, and yes, you can pet him, but gently as he is still not used to it. The Kashi said simply as he took one of said bottles from under his seat to take a big mouthful, and downing it as a way to give the others permission, and because he needed it, after the Equestria group finished briefing him about Molestia before the meeting even started. Hi. Still looking pretty flushed Maelstrom gave a shy wave with a hoof, while every human on the other side as one gave the offered bottles a look, and then taking a generous shot from them. Holy shit. Hiashi himself admitted shocked, now finally getting the reason why Hanabi had out of the blue, started insisting and becoming a foreign diplomat. I guess you had never seen an Alicorn then. Luna said amused as she too entered the room, causing a new round of drinking from the humans present. No. That was lacking from my album of memories. Shikaku answered with wide eyes. Do not squeal, Hana. Do not. Tsum hissed to her daughter. I I can't hold it back. The young woman answered visibly struggling as her voice was strained. Trying to defuse the situation, the young stallion flashed a mischievous smile many in the room recognized and flew towards the two Inuzuka women in a theatrical fluttering of his wings to gently nuzzle both and then sit on his haunches on their shared desk to look at them with his large sapphire eyes. That's cheating G.I.A. Hana couldn't even finish her answer as she dove for a hug, burying her face in his mane. Do you like? Maelstrom asked him used as he circled her with his wings. You who? She answered with closed eyes. Many chuckled at watching Tsum try and fail to look stern while biting her lips in envy, same going for A doing the same while sweating bullets. Unfair, I want a hug too Koyuki said whining. You hoo hoo. As you can see, human or pony, our Naruto is still the same. Kakashi said chuckling amused. The problem is that he, his friends and the whole and they live in is facing a great danger, and we are the only ones that can help. Tsunade explained. So he is not a diplomat of Konoha Tuhiashi said in realization. Equestria, Luna said. The Equestria, but the other way around. I see. The Hyuga clan head said nodding. What menace is it? Hana asked immediately, actually whining a little when Maelstrom returned to stand next to his mother. In answer Luna's horn lighted up to summon a translucent copy of Celestia's corrupted form. My sister. Celestia, ruler of Equestria during the day while I rule over it during the night. For a thousand years we have guided Equestria as firm, yet gentle, rulers, but what you see here is my sister's corrupted form, a mockery of her fair appearances. They are exceptionally pure, so when they fall victim of something very well, wrong, they change in attitude, powers and personality. They are literally corrupted by said evil influence. Tsunade explained sighing. I am technically immune, so to say, to it as my training in the ninja arts and the battles I had growing up here made me desensitized to it. In fact, I had to be forced into corruption to briefly fall to it. Maelstrom explained. But you are okay now? Gara asked worried. He is. Luckily as he said, he is not too pure to fall victim to corruption. And I am actually happy for it. Luna said smiling proud of her son. 
The fact remains that as I fell victim to corruption because of my sorrow and anger, and now my sister too has just succumbed to it, she also added. How deep must sorrow be to literally corrupt somebody physically? Chowza said sadly. Sorrow is soul-crushing, very few can face it and come out unscathed. Shibi answered nodding sagely. Actually, Maelstrom said blushing. It's not exactly sorrow that corrupted Celestial Luna added as she too, along Kakashi and Tsunade, had their face turned bright red. They? Was the unanimous question of the others, projections included. Apparently Celestia Sen had to work hard for a thousand years to cover for Luna Sen's absence, a tiresome and stressful millennium of work without stopper vacations and without romantic company Tsunade said. They? Lust my sister got corrupted by her pent-up lust of a millennium without male company at night, she has renamed herself Molestia, Queen of Lust, and I would like to beg you to help us, because unless we find a counter to her power to defeat her every pony who directly faces her, will be overwhelmed by lust and turn into a mating maniac. And I fear she may actually force herself on my son, her nephew, in her haste to finally have Stallion satisfy her. The Moon Ali Korn answered in what was clearly the hardest answer she had ever given to somebody. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
If she breaks your heart I want to be free to blast her all I want until I am satisfied. Twilight answered sighing. I doubt even Discord would stop you in that case, but yes, you will be free to do it. Rarity said with a small smile. Even if that will never happen in the first place. Spike added. True. Okay okay you win. Twilight finally conceded with a defeated tone. Thank you Twilight. I swear wham. Twilight Spike yelled with wide eyes as he saw Rarity fail to finish her sentence because the purple unicorn blasted her against the wall. This was just a tiny preview of what I will do to you if you make my baby boy suffer. Twilight said with an overly gentle smile that made the other mares plus dragon gulp in dread. Duly noted Rarity answered with a groan from the hole in the wall she was in. How cute. Friendship truly is great. A new voice said bitterly from the door. Who's oh? It's you. Dash said growling as she recognized the young woman. The displeasure is mutual. The human answered. Who's she? AJ asked confused. Anata Huga, nice to meet you although, the nice in it is there just for good manners sake. The young woman said marching inside to sit on the only empty bed in the opposite side of the room, so to watch the whole group of mares. So you have met her already, Dash. Flutter she asked. Yep. Last time I came here. She is still not happy about us. The rainbow maned mare answered smirking. You stole away the man I love, you cannot pretend me to be happy. Hanada answered growling. It is not stealing, my sister simply returned my son to me. Luna answered as she too entered the room. This doesn't mean that you can kidnap Oomph. Hanada's screaming went cut short when the moon Alicorn's horn lighted up to force her mouth closed. It was not pony napping. But merely a recovery mission, to use a term you know. Now we will resolve this issue you still have with our world, and then I will accompany the girls to a new meeting with this village's clan heads, where we have finally found a way to resolve the corruption of my sister, after 20 hours of no-stop brainstorming. Your tantrums will either stop or be put on hold, young lady. Luna roared making the Hugo girl shrink under her glare. Maelstrom is and forever will be my baby, my son. And you won't force me to huff him over just because your juvenile crush stops you from getting the simple fact that he is a pony and you a human. It cannot work anymore between you two. The Alicorn bellowed in full canterlet voice. Yep. Taking a deep breath the Moon Princess stood in the middle of the room to look at the present girls with narrowed eyes, making them shy away slightly. You have five minutes to come to an understanding before we need to go back to their tower, so sit down and talk like civilized people and ponies. You want us to fix this in five minutes? AJ asked with a raised eyebrow. In a word. Yes. Luna yelled with all her fury blowing the earth pony back. Eep. It's her fault. Every pony that knew him accepted as being a pony, but she still whines about it. Dash said petulantly. I do not whine. I am just saying that you denied me a chance to be with my crush. Hinata answered offended. Oh cry me a river, darling. That is the exact definition of whining. Rarity answered huffing. The ape. Even Bloom stopped whining already, and she is still a filly. AJ added annoyed. But what would he even find in you? You are a horse. I'm hard working just like him. AJ answered smirking. I am by default 20% cooler than anything in our universe, of course we will be a good match since he is the same for your universe. Dash added. We actually occupy the same universe, Dash. We are just from two different planes of existence. Twilight muttered. Maylee likes her brain. Spike translated. I like parties and pranks so Pinky offered shrugging. Ooh and Shy simply looked down when the Huga girl looked at her. The bitch stole my shy girl gig. The human girl thought in anger. Brown. Can the tired and still sporting and headache Trixie sleep, please? Trixie asked whining as she finally woke up. I am glad to see you are okay, my student. Luna said elated. Thank you, teacher. But who is the screeching monkey? The mare asked. I am not a screeching monkey. Hinata screamed in answer giving start to a screaming contest between herself and the girls. Sweet harmony give me strength, Luna begged while looking at the sky. She almost envied her son for being forced outside the village for a quick mission with his team. But Maelstrom several hours later rode back towards Konoha. The by now legendary, so to speak, Team 7 plus Jown and Rank Shinobi Yamato were tree jumping in silence as they were returning from a very delicate mission near Iowa. What? Maelstrom, henged to look like his old human self, asked annoyed as the silence kept going. You dropped a mountain on the guy. Sasuke finally said with a deadpan tone. Yeah. So what? The Alicorn Prince answered nonplussed. You dropped a whole freaking mountain on top of our target and his men. Yamato replied putting a lot of emphasis on the key details. I can't see your point. Maelstrom replied unsure. They think you overdid. Sakura explained. It was more like a small plateau more than a mountain he answered shyly. It was still several thousands tons of rock, dope. Sasuke countered. But it worked. 
The prince answered whining. Point taken. The Achiha young man conceded. Gouche. Yamato chorused. Hui. Hui. A well-known voice said as another team joined them. Oh. Tamari-san. Good day. Yamato said surprised as Gara's sister joined them soon followed by three kids. Do you have a team now, Tamari-chan? Maelstrom asked amused. Yep. Kankiru was supposed to be their sensei, but he has no patience with Jennings, so we switched jobs, now he is Gara's secretary, and I have a team honestly, I got the better end of the deal, it's way less stressful dealing with brats. Tamari answered laughing. Hey. That is not nice, sensei. The only girl of the Jenin trio answered pouting. We were going to stop to rest, it's their first mission outside Suna, so I want them to start slow, mind keeping us company. Peace or not there is still plenty of bandits roaming around, and I would hate to put my boys in danger so soon. She begged with a wide smirk. Oh. Fine. But only a couple of hours. Yamato finally relented as everybody else in the group turned to look at him with narrowed eyes. Thank you. Tamari answered satisfied. And even should somebody be so stupid to attack, I am sure the dope here will be fast and drop a mountain on them as well. Sasuke added casually. Oh come on, team. This was the first time I did it. Maelstrom growled annoyed. Tell that to those monks who saw their monastery be forcefully relocated of a few miles. The other answered snorting. The mountain? One of the boys asked disturbed. Burrito kun is very peculiar, so to say right. Tamari answered latching to his arm to pet him. Hey. While we rest please be a deer and transform, I need cuddles. She asked with a feral smile. That would be very irrespons Yamato tried saying before Sakura unceremoniously shoved him aside and down the tree he was standing on. If somebody will get cuddles, that will be me. The pink-haired girl roared as she pried the blonde away to hide him behind herself. I was the first to ask, Pinky. Shove it. You do not look happy, Sasuke said impressed. They are treating me like a teddy bear, you would in my place. Maybe. Sick pervert. Okay. That's enough. He answered removing his hinge. Naruto. No. Why nobody ever listened to me, Yamato muttered depressed as the Genin trio gasped in shock at seeing the Alicorn appear in place of the human. What the fuck? The two boys yelled with wide eyes. Pony. The girl instead yelled with starry eyes of awe. If you two cannot share like friends, then neither of the two will get cuddles. Maelstrom said opening his wings wide to fly up, take the Genin girl of Suna with himself and land on an ear cloud on the notes of the girl's giggles and happy squeals. So soft. She said in wonder as she was moved down to lie on the cloud. What do you think? Cuddles. The prince asked aloud to be heard by Sakura and Tamari. Yes. The girl answered happily as she hugged the alicorn clothes, so to be covered by his wings and falling rapidly asleep. Damn yaoo. Sakura growled while glaring at Tamari. You started this. Why I didn't accept him teleporting us to Konoha? Yamato asked whining. Because he admitted to be still not fully a master of that spell, and you got scared of leaving pieces behind. Now suck it up, this situation is partially your fault as well for not accepting the suggestion. Sasuke answered sighing as the two young women kept arguing. Damn it. The next day Kanoha Hokage Tower Hokage Office. As soon as Team 7 registered their return and confirmed their small mission ending and success, and the postscript about redrawing few maps to show the new location of a certain mountain, the Alicorn Prince, his mother, Trixie and the bearers of the Elements of Harmony, were called into the small office to talk with Kakashi. You managed to come up with a plan, your highness. Twilight asked in surprise. We have several ideas, but nothing certain as neither I or them have a clear picture of how Celestia's corrupting powers work in detail. Luna answered sighing. I have run few tests on the blood samples I took from all the girls, to compare a lust-influenced Marino a healthy one. Tsunade said uncertain. Luckily both Hana-san and Yoshino-san have enough knowledge about animals, with the former being a registered veterinarian, to theorize what was wrong no offense. Kakashi added. None taken, your main branch of medicine is for humans, so I understood the need of a different name for it. Luna conceded with a reassuring tone. So? What are we gonna do? Dash asked. Tinfoil hats. It's gonna be tinfoil hats. Am I right? Pinky asked excited. To be honest we did consider those too, but we discarded it immediately after. Luna said. Ah. The pink-maned mare moaned with a sad expression. We cannot tell where magic stops and more physical changes starts, but we think this will be a nice start. Tsunade said showing the group a series of small bottles filled with pills. What are those, Bachan? Maelstrom asked confused. Hormone suppressants, it will stop the more mundane causes of the rise in lust, hormonal speaking, Hana and Tsum, were most helpful in preparing those tailored to you species, two every eight hours, and hopefully it should stop most of Celestia Sen's influence. 
Tsunade explained. How long will they last? Twilight asked. Take two every eight hours for maximum effect, but once finished helping Celestia San you'll have to spend the following week drinking lots of water to purify your body, come back here daily, and we will check for side effects too. The busty blonde answered. Then there are the bugs. Kakashi said making Shibi Aburami enter the room. Bugs Rarity yelled with wide eyes. It was difficult, but we managed to find the ideal counter to what we believe is the kind of pheromone Celestia San can generate around herself. Shibi answered. The pink Miss Trixie muttered shivering, giving a thankful smile to Maelstrom, as he moved to cover her back with a wing. Some of it was still on your fur, Trixie San, unless it always changes we should be able to overpower it with the ones produced by the Aburami clan bugs they will lend to you. What we will use is a subspecies of Queen Bee, her pheromones can either entice the males into copulation, in case of lack of enough willing males, or calm them down if there are too many, she regulates it based on the amount of sexual pheromone she can feel in the air, and counter it by mass producing a calming agent, if the concentration is too high. Shy Bee explained as from under his coat, aid of said bee flew out of his coat to gently crawl inside the pony's nose. All for their discomfort of course. We tested it and saw that in the right quantities of Celestia's mist, the Chinsei pheromone production is triggered into activation, being already in your nose should make it faster to affect you. The Aburami trained them into staying still and do not attack you, so you don't have to worry. Tsunade said making the others finally breath as they had instinctively started holding their breath as soon as the bees entered their nose. Chinsei tranquilizer. Why would Miss B produce that? Fluttershy asked sad. Would you like being gang banged by your whole town whenever it is time for mating? Shibi asked curious. Yep. No. Exactly. She does that to prevent a mass attack of willing males. The Aburami answered nodding. So between pills and bees we will cover the physical effects, but what about its hypnosis-like effects? I am the one more battle-oriented of the two, and yet even I felt strained in resisting Celestia's corruption. Luna asked. That will require a bit of trust towards us. Let's say a huge amount of trust. Kakashi said uneasy. I am listening. The moon Alicorn said with narrowed eyes. You should let the Yamanaka clan hypnotize you before going. What? The group yelled. Yes. A subliminal message about not accepting any other hypnotic order outside of one made by a human, it's all we could come up with. We promise we will fully remove it. There will remain no trace afterwards. Kakashi said immediately as he saw several horns light up in anger. Kakashi sensei the way Maelstrom said that made the man recoil as if insulted, thanks to the tone he used. Don't you dare trying anything fun. The prince finished hissing in anger. That is all we can do? Twilight asked. We are no experts in magic, and Luna San too had very little to help us with. My sister's new powers are still a mystery, without proper study there is little I know, and being too close to her is inadvisable without falling prey to her, and obey her every command mitigate the effect of her lust aura at the best of our abilities was all we could do. I personally empowered those bees with all the spells I thought will help and gave my best pointers in potion making for the pills, but potions was more Celestia's forte back in the days, she technically knows more than me in that field. Luna answered sighing. What do you think, girls? Twilight asked her friends. It doesn't look like we have lots to do like this. Dash answered groaning. We must a hurry before things get out of hoof and every pony start looking for some pony outside their couples ah don't want some weirdo looking funny at bloom. AJ added worried. I think we can trust them, they do heal me and Shy. Pinky tried saying. Then they promised to remove the hypnosis. Shy also said. Trixie didn't like being the slave of Celestia. So everything is fine to stop her. Trixie said still shivering. My sister helped you save me, so I will pay her back and save her. Luna declared strongly. Then we will follow your plan. Twilight said nodding. Good. Unfortunately Karama's willingness or not, neither pills or hypnosis will work on Naruto. We have prepared special nasal filters for him hopefully that in both his and Kurama's combined force of will, will cover the lack of medication. Tsunade said sighing. And the bees? He asked. That too may not work, but we left it just in case, since those are natural pheromones, not artificial. Tsunade answered. While the girls and Luna San visit the Yamanaka Naruto we may need you to remain here, there is something we need to discuss. Kakashi said exchanging a meaningful look with Luna making her sigh in dismay. Oh okay. The prince replied unsure as he sat in front of the desk while the mares were escorted out by the newly arrived Eno. The next day right outside Ponyville Equestria. In a very isolated patch of trees right outside the entrance to the small town, a portal opened and a dark blue hoof tentatively peeked outside and wave around a little before being hastily pulled back, then it was Luna's head to pop out of the portal as she looked around with narrowed eyes while sniffling the air. Seems like we can come out freely, there is no compulsion in the light. 
she said after a full minute of waiting to then walk out of the portal soon followed by her son and the elements of harmony. Trixie. Come on, it's safe. Maelstrom begged with a gentle smile. Oh okay. The mare said unsure as she too walked out making the portal close behind her making her jump a little in surprise. I don't like this calm, things are never this calm. Dash muttered worried. Let's see what is happening in Ponyville. Twilight said making the group nod. A short walk later they could see things actually looking pretty normal, compared to Celestia's first arrival as corrupted, the only difference was the empty look in every pony's eyes and the frozen smiles perennially etched on their faces. Creepy as hell. Maelstrom muttered disturbed as everybody moved to let them pass while bowing to them. My sister's control on them disgraceful. Luna hissed in contempt at the complete and absolute silence that reigned in the small town as nobody was talking, only going through the motions of their everyday life. Hello? Oh? Pinky tried asking while moving a hoof in front of a near mare's face and getting an answer only a slightly larger smile and a similar gesture before the mare walked away. Creepy. Pinky said shivering. Your Highness. A familiar voice asked gently. A shining twilight said in horror as her big brother and several other guards joined the group, with all of them sporting the same empty smile and eyes. Your Highness Maelstrom. Princess Luna. The Harvest. The Harvest. The other guard said excited. The Harvest. The Harvest. Every pony around the group yelled in ecstasy as one. Harvest. What are you speaking of? Luna demanded angrily. You all have been chosen. The Harvest has come. Shining Armor answered with a broken smile. Harvest of what? Dash asked worried. You all will be the first to undergo the harvest. Mr. Celestia has chosen you. One of the guards behind Shining answered. She will feast on your bodies. The harvest. The harvest. Another added giddily. Queen Celestia shall be satisfied. Her maidenhood demands stallion's essence. Her thirsty mouth requests mare's juices. The harvest. The harvest. Another guard still added. Eh? AJ asked confused. Celestia wants Maylee to mate with her while me and you others should be technically licked there by my sister until our climaxing satisfy her thirst. Luna explained unsure if she should blush or feel disgusted. Harvest. 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 Mating. Bucking. Mistress's romp must be satisfied. Harvest. Harvest. You know. For one angry zombie-like mob this is a damn strange one. Maelstrom said with a weak chuckle as the group slowly backed away. Yep. They keep looking at us in a way I don't like. AJ confirmed shivering. Trixie doesn't like this. Trixie wants to go back to the ninja village. Trixie begged. Dash too doesn't like this. Dash added nodding. Little Twy. Come on. Your teacher needs help. How can you refuse her? Shining said. She wants to do dirty things to me. That's what she wants. Twilight answered with her tail flattening to better cover her privates. It's not dirty if mistress does it. The stallion answered making others nod behind him. Stand back. Luna ordered as her horn lighted up. Ready to run, girls. Otherwise we'll need to fight our way through them. Rarity said with narrowed eyes as her horn too started shining in magic. It was in that moment that several gas of leaves rained from the sky to burst into a thick cloud of smoke separating the girls and alicorns from the angry mob. Milestone, Millstone, Moonstone and Wishbone. From you brothers this attitude I won't condone. A voice said darkly as more smoke bombs were thrown making the various ponies fall asleep. This voice Akora. Twilight said in surprise. Balone, Storm Cone and Cyclone. Never I thought I'll see the day you'll turn into beasts of hormone. The zebra said as vines came to life to tie up several guards. She is helping us, she is somehow sane. Luna said she saw Zakora appear from the woods and motion them to reach her. The sun is lust and the wind pheromone, believe me, all this to me is well known. Zakora kept saying as she reached for her saddle bag and fished out a vial of bright yellow powder. But my hut is a safe zone for the heroes alone. She then said throwing the vial high in the air. Oh my gosh that's a lot of flashing powder. Close your eyes every pony. Luna yelled with wide eyes. To all you others I'll just say. Begin. The zebra finished saying just as the vial broke against a tree, producing a blinding explosion of light with a faint wham. Sound. This way. Still keeping their eyes closed the group followed Zakora's voice towards the Everfree Forest. You can open your eyes now, the powder effect is finished. She then said once the group was far enough. I am happy to see you Zakora. How did you stop Celestia from corrupting you? Maelstrom asked with an elated smile. I felt the tingle of Celestia's influence begin and acted accordingly, the forest and its magic mitigated the effect enough for me to have the time needed to finish my countermeasures. She answered as after a long run finally the group could see her hut. It's strange to not hear her rhyme. Pinky said curious. 
I don't think Miss Sakura feels the need to in this situation, Pinky. Fluttershy answered. Exactly. Sakura answered as she hurried the others inside before slamming the door closed and start pouring a colorful mixture on the corners. What is that? Twilight asked curious. Mostly salt, but empowered by a mixture of herbs and crystals I then cooked into a potion and then left to evaporate to get the magical salt, it purifies the house from the Queen of Lust's influence, since it is still evil magic at its base, Zakora answered sighing once done. So as long as you are here you are safe. Shy asked worried. More or less, every 8 hours I have to add new salt, and I am starting to finish it, I maybe have enough for other 2 recharges then then I will join Ponyville, I fear. Zakora answered in dread. Then we will stop Celestia before that, have no fear. Luna said with a reassuring smile. AJ? A young voice said from outside making the farmer turn bleach white in horror. BB Bloom? She stuttered. Rarity? Another voice asked. Bell? Rarity yelled with wide eyes as the door was forced open by Celestia herself. There you are, Dash. Gilda said with a forced triumphant smile. Gilda Scottaloo Dash watched in horror as the three crusaders and the griffin followed the corrupted Olicorn dressed like French maids. I think I am going to throw up those three are fucking kids. Karama admitted at seeing the three kids dressed like that. Took you long enough to get back home, sister. You and Melee are the key elements to my finally complete my collection, you shouldn't have forced me to wait. Celestia said with a childish pout. What have you done to my sister? AJ roared as she tried to pounce on the Alicorn only for her to remain frozen midair by the other's magic. Nothing, yet. I am holding thee as incentive to have you follow my orders. She answered nonplussed as she nuzzled the three girls making them giggle. What do you want? Rarity asked with a bestial growl promising unending agony. Mealy to do me on the front, Luna to lick me on the flank, and you others in cute outfit for me to taste to my heart's desire to start, other things will come later, I have a thousand years worth of pent up stress to blow, and you will either help me. Or be forced to watch powerless as I throw every pony you hold dear to the hungry guards I am keeping aside just in case of your refusal, the corrupted Alicorn answered simply as she started walking away to let several guards appear at the door. Not if I fight you? Luna hissed angrily. To what end? Only the elements might pose a threat to me, if only I did not control the little sisters of two of them. This not considering that I can just amplify my hold on the sun, and our whole world will turn into an endless mating mess, until every pony will lose their mind and turn into soulless drones, only thinking about mating. How long do you think they will last before hunger and thirst and fatigue will start demanding their toll? Celestia answered smirking. Luna simply glared at her sister's back for several seconds before her horn stopped glowing, and she took in a huge breath. Can you give us a couple hours to get ready? The moon princess asked with a defeated tone. What? Spike and the elements yelled as on in shock. You have one hour then my guards will take you and bring you to me in the throne room in Canterlot, the first few hours I want to be bent over the throne and used as a harlot, then the real fun will start. Celestia answered giggling as she shoved AJ down the ground and then teleport away. Leave us some privacy, we'll need to be at our best to satisfy the mistress. Maelstrom said with a disgusted tone. Yes, your highness. The soldier said repairing the door to close it. Why you accepted, teacher Luna? Trixie asked. While planning for our attack against my sister, we also considered something like this happening, she has the ability to lock the mind of every pony under the sun into an endless mating frenzy that would continue until they fall down dead, and apparently she also took care of holding your sisters as maids, as an extra countermeasure against us. It was our worst case scenario and is actually happening, Luna said sighing. What are you talking about, your highness? Twilight asked confused. We will need to satisfy my aunt, as soon as she lowers her guard, we will be able to blast her point blank with the elements of harmony. Maelstrom said looking down. It was the only plan I could come up with in this case, we have no other choice. Luna added as if to reassure the girls it all was her idea, in fact Ash was the first to vocalize her denial. No. We are not doing it. You are not doing it. Dash yelled as she moved to hug the prince while glaring at the moon alicorn. We have no other choice, Rainbow Dash. My sister will even burn this world down with the sun if we refuse. Luna yelled in answer. Let the world burn then. I know how it will go if he mates with her I. I saw it happen already. The Pegasus yelled in fright. Eh? Hey? Where? The others asked confused. Ashy? Have you been reading something lately? Maybe written by Erosenin. Maelstrom asked amused making her face burn bright red. Ash. You shouldn't read that kind of books. They are dirty. Sha yelled scandalized. BDSM. The other answered. Shutting up now. The shy Pegasus said immediately while covering herself in her wings and curling into a tight ball. And you call me an egghead. You take notes from books. Twilight said offended. You have a secret room full of notes. 
Trixie whispered to her. Yes, but other than you and Princess Luna nobody knows about it. She whispered back. I Sue do not need to know every detail of my son's love life. Luna grumbled while face hoofing. Am I really that shallow to you? The prince asked looking hurt. Uh? You think that I will break up with you just because maybe I will prefer doing it with Celestia. First off she is my aunt, and then you need to remember that those things happen only in that kind of books. I am not going to say oh. Sex with Celestia feels so much better. Between us is over, dash. I was not that kind of guy when I was human, and sure as hell I am not that kind of stallion now that I am a pony. The prince said hugging her close to himself. Promise. And please let me breath. She asked with a muffled voice, since his hug forced her face to be pressed against his chest. Sorry, sorry. But yes, I promise. I do like to think we are together because we like each other, not because we are a good match at mating. He answered lightening the hug so she could breath normally. But so the bees and the pills are useless. Dash asked. The bees are there as a counter the pills Luna said blushing fiercely. They are aphrodisiacs, don't they? Rarity asked sighing. Yes, Maelstrom has been informed just to have him cooperate. Luna answered sighing. So we have no choice, I am sorry Spike, Rarity said with an apologetic tone. I don't like this the small dragon whispered. You hoo hoo. Jealous. The dressmaker asked nuzzling him. Yeah. Good, I too get jealous when another mare approaches you, so we are even. She answered kissing his cheek. Have no fear. It will all be mare on mare action for her, our target is tired down my aunt enough so that she won't be able to do anything when we will blast her with the elements. Maelstrom said with a reassuring tone. Mare on gulp. Mare? Spike asked sweating. Spike. Rarity roared. They are my friends. Don't you dare have dirty fantasies about them. She yelled furious. Oh my gosh. Pinky yelled with wide eyes. Yep. Don't look towards here, Suga. I'm already taken. The horrified Trixie orders you to not look at her with dirty eyes. Rarity. Stop corrupting him. I was only having fantasies about Rarity. I I I mean I was not having fantasies. No sir. No no. No fantasies of any kind. Spike yelled in answer. Let's just go and deal with my sister, please, before this day gets any worse. Luna said sighing while looking at the sky as if to ask for divine help. Yes. We better. Twilight said glaring at both Spike and Rarity that decided to remain in the far back of the group so to leave as much distance as possible between them and Twilight. Take your pills, people. Let's get this over with. Maelstrom said sighing as the group departed. Later that day Royal Castle. Throne room. Lemon happened. Now. Luna yelled as she too noticed the wavering of her sister's consciousness. In an instant the clones dispelled, making poor Maelstrom erupt in an almost lethal orgasm himself from the sensory overload, making him weakly wonder if his balls would actually survive all that spewing of sperm, as black dots filled his vision, and the girls rapidly charged their elements to hit Celestia full force, throwing her against the wall, strong enough to leave an imprint of herself. Deep silence then fell in the room as the now non-corrupted Celestia slumped to the floor boneless. Ooh oh I think my balls have shriveled like a prune, only Maelstrom weak chuckle was heard as he lied on the floor to catch his breath. Take some ice, my dear. Luna answered concerned as she summoned an ice bag for him and his abused crotch. Thanks, mom. He answered with a relived sigh. It was in that moment that Celestia woke up to observe the whole room with wide eyes, before she left her head slumped down to not look at everybody's face. I am really sorry for what I did there are no words to express how horrified I am of the situation, she muttered shyly. You okay at least, sister? Luna asked. Yes I am a bit sore though the other admitted with a low voice as her back kept dripping from the astounding quantity of semen she had been filled with in both holes. Only growls from the mare's present was heard in answer to that making Celestia flinch and shrink under the combined glare she was victim of. You too, Discord I I am sorry. The sun Alicorn added weakly. Sigh. Let me take a shower, eat something and sleep. Then we will continue this discussion, I can forgive you a little because you were corrupted, but what you did to me was humiliating to the extreme. I am sorry. She answered sobbing as tears started falling from her eyes as her whole body trembled from her hiccups. Hey. We are not that much angry. We don't hate you. Luna said immediately as she moved to her side to hug her. I am sorry. Celestia repeated as she kept crying. Auntie Maelstrom muttered as he limped his way towards her to add himself to the hug. Princess. Twilight said sadly as she too moved to hug the desperate Alicorn. Come on. Rarity gently nudged Dash forward. She. She was not in herself, she was corrupted and so not thinking straight. Come on, Dash. The white unicorn prompted. Sigh. Okay, okay. 
The Cyan Mare conceded huffing angrily as she too joined the otters around Celestia, thing that acted as the signal for a group hug, yes, even Discord joined, that acted as the final nail on Celestia's self-control, as she broke down into a sorrow-filled wailing, as she kept apologizing over and over. Two days later Royal Castle Dining Room. The group compassed by the elements of Harmony, Princess Luna, Maelstrom, Discord, Spike and Trixie, had finally recovered from the taxing mission against Celestia, and the even harder one about damage control to salvage Celestia's image. Boo. Modifying all those memories has been boring. Discord groaned as he cracked his back. I have you now that I had to do the same in every dream of every pony and other sentient creatures everywhere. Luna answered with a loud yawn. We all were there helping you, Princess. Twilight added with dark bags under her eyes. The yip, dream walking feels strange. AJ added groaning with her face resting on the table. Good morning Celestia muttered shyly as she finally came out from her room to join the others. We are not angry anymore, Sally. Please do cheer up. Discord begged annoyed. I am sorry. She answered. We know. The other chorused rolling their eyes. Have you all take your contraceptives? The sun Ali Korn asked. Yes, we even asked back in Kanoha for further help in that regard, Auntie. Maelstrom answered. You must find me disgusting to look at, don't you? She said sobbing. No, Auntie, I am not. He answered with a gentle smile as he moved to nuzzle her. Thank you. She answered kissing his cheek and freezing. It was not a romantic kiss. She tried saying as every eyes nailed her with a furious glare. Smooch. In answer she stole a quick kiss to his lips before bolting out of the room. Better. Luna roared as she and the others hurried to chase the sun Ali Korn, leaving Maelstrom alone with Rarity, Discord and Spike. Worthy it. Celestia was heard screaming as she ran away from the bloodthirsty horde. Bang. 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 You will ruin the table, Maylee. Rarity said stopping the prince from leaving an imprint of his face on the table surface. You At that then the wind Ali Korn settled for simply cry fat tears of despair, while his friends consoled him on the notes of Celestia's shrieks and Luna's curses and spells. You can do it, you can survive this as well. Spike offered patting his back. Bye I I I I. There must be a day where nothing bad or strange happens. Even just for the sake of his health. Chapter End Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.